Good morning, everybody. From our home to yours, it's my prayer that our time spent together this morning will be an encouragement, that we will be renewed as we hear God's word, inspired as we worship, and that we would have a sense of community, even though we have to worship separately in our homes. A very warm welcome as we spend this time together. And as we worship, I do want to encourage you that if there is somebody from your church community that comes to mind, somebody that you normally sit next to or uh, chat to, maybe this week you can make contact with them and drop them a message or a phone call just to express your love and care to, to them. As usual, I remind you, don't just watch the service, but participate. Close your eyes when we pray. Uh, sing together as we worship together. And, and it is my prayer that this time will be uplifting, renewing, and encouraging for you as we worship together. Our call to worship is from 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Let's worship God as we sing together, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed Jesus, we worship you this morning with the psalmist saying, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. We worship you in the splendor of your holiness. You sit enthroned over the flood waters of our lives. You are enthroned as king forever. You give strength to us, your people, and you bless us with your peace. We thank you, God, for being our sanctuary in this fallen world. That when we're worried, you calm our angst. When we're afraid, you hold us close. 
You rescue us when we slip into the low places and set us back on higher ground. And you refresh our souls. And this morning we praise your holy name. But Lord, we are so aware of our failings. We know that coming before you, we can bring nothing good of our own. All that is good and lovely is a gift from you. We know that we have lived in ways that have not glorified you. We know that we have forgotten your nearness and lost sight of your goodness. We have allowed the world and its troubles to creep into our hearts. And we have turned our eyes away from your grace and the promises of your love. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us and renew us. Help us to live in a way that shines your light into this world. Help us to hold on to the peace that you have placed in our hearts and to create spaces of joy and peace for everyone we encounter. Help us to show your love to our families and to our communities. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your promise that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just, not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for this amazing grace won for us on the cross. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to work in our hearts, to change us to look a little more like Jesus every day. And in his name we pray this. Amen.
morning, boys and girls. I wonder how many of you could tell me what I'm going to do if I put on one of these and, uh, and if I grab one of these. What do you think I'm going to be doing? Well, if your guess was that I'm going to be brying, then you're absolutely right. And why would I be brying? Well, because it's Mother's Day and, and we want to spoil the mother of our house. So Brenda is not going to have to cook today, but uh, Caleb and I will be brying and, and putting lunch together because we want to just take a moment to remember how special uh, the mom of our house is. And uh, many of you sent me messages uh, some of the the big kids and some of the of, uh, some of you younger kids sent me messages about how special your moms are. Let's listen to them quickly. My mom is awesome because she is patient, she is kind, and because she loves me. My mom is awesome because she helps me with my homework, she takes care of me, and she's helpful. My mom is awesome because she loves me. My mom is awesome because she lets me stay up late. My mom is awesome because she puts everyone else's needs before her own. She has a heart of gold. She's an awesome role model and I love her to bits. She's amazing. My, My mom, mom is, is awesome, awesome because, because she is powerful. And she is funny. And she is caring. My mom is awesome because she was the one that was the glue that stuck us all together. And that legacy remains with us as a family, even though she's not here, but she still lives in our hearts. My mom is very awesome because she makes food for me and play PlayStation with me. And we go for walks. I love her so much. My mom is awesome because she makes the most beautiful things. And for 50 years, she's been there for me, cared for me, taught me and love me and my family. My mom is awesome because she takes care of me and I love her. My mom is awesome because I skip a pizza. My mommy is awesome because at 78 she's still as gorgeous as ever and so full of love. My mom is awesome because she takes me to the best restaurants and she takes me to the best places for holiday. My mom is awesome because she dresses me up. My mom is awesome because she big hugs. My mom's special because she's clever. My mom is awesome because she loves me, she cares for me, and she tucks me in for bed every time I go to sleep. My mom is so special because she makes the best spaghetti. My mom is awesome because even in these dark times, she's the light at the end of my tunnel. My mom is awesome because she always thinks of others and she's one of the bravest people I know. I love you, Mom. I like you to be safe. My mom is awesome because she makes the nicest food. She takes care of, take care of me and helps me with my schoolwork. My mother is awesome because she's the pillar to my life. She motivates me every time. And without her, I wouldn't be here right now. My mom has a full-time job and she cooks and she cleans and still has time to look after all of us. My mom's the president of our family. I love her so much and she's amazing. My mom is awesome because she always gives me her undivided attention, even though I don't even live close to her anymore. Lots of love, mom, all the way from Canada. Mom, you're the best and I love you a lot. My mom is awesome because she's always there for me. It doesn't matter what her day look is like. And she never fails to bring me a cup of tea if I'm having a really bad day. Uh, she keeps us and she, uh, she, she's our best mommy. My mom is awesome because she goes and buys me delicious food and she loves me very much. My mom is awesome because she takes the most amazing care of my family and she always finds a way to make me laugh. My mom is so great because she's always there when I needed her and she provided me with everything I have right now. So I'm blessed. My mom is awesome because she always takes good care of us and brings food to the table. My mom is the best because I kiss her and she always likes 
My mom is great because she helps me with everything that I do. My mom is awesome because she gives me hugs. Our mom is awesome because she's a role model and we can always count on her. We, we love, love you, you, mom. My mom is awesome because she's the best mommy ever. My mom is awesome because she makes good food. She's a very confident person. She helps with pe she helps people in the family and she takes care of all of us. My mom is awesome because no matter what we do, no matter what happens, she never gives up on us or um, stops loving us or anything like that. We love our mom because, because she's awesome and she always puts others before herself. Love, love you, mom. mom. My mom is awesome and she helped me with my birthday. My mom is awesome because she is kind, caring, considerate and loving. She is a mom to four children. She is a granny to ten children and she is a great granny to six children. She has another two on the way and we just love her so much. My mom is great because she cooks meals for me. And my mom is awesome because she helps me with Difficult homework. My mom is awesome because I love her. My mom is awesome because she's kind, loving, caring, and she's always there when I need her. Hi, mom. You're the best mom ever. Your cooking is so nice. You take care of us so well. My mom is great because even though we give her so much stress, she manages to show us love, care, and do the most for us. My mom is the best in the world. I love her so much. And my mom is awesome because she helps me with homework that I can't submit for school. My mom is special because she loves me and my brothers. My mom is awesome because she is a soldier that protects us from the rocks that are thrown at us by the world. But she also protects us from bad food. Isn't that cool how amazing our moms are? Well, boys and girls, uh, Uncle Andrew Nell reminded me this week of, of a mom that, that many of us don't think about. Now, you remember from about three weeks ago, we did a, a church service on Jesus feeding the 5,000. And of course, he fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two little fish that were brought by a little boy. And I think that little boy who helped Jesus feed the 5,000 had a mom who uh, packed his lunchbox for him. And, but he had a diligent mommy who knew that at some point he was going to get hungry and she made sure that he would have something to eat. And that's the kind of people our moms are, aren't they? They're the ones who think of the things that we don't think of. They're the ones who always put themselves second and, and look after us. Our moms cook and clean, our moms provide, our moms comfort, our moms give us wisdom, and we love them to bits, and we're so grateful for them. And so today we want to say thank you to God for our moms. But we are very aware that some of us have lost moms in this last year. And so today is a little bit of a sad day. There are also some of us who would have loved to be moms, but couldn't. And there are some of us who are moms, but have lost children. And, and so today is always a tough and sad day. And so while we celebrate our moms, we also recognize that for some people today is a sad and difficult day. The other thing that's really different about lockdown today is that many of us are far away from our moms and we wish we could see them or maybe even take them out for lunch or do something special with them, but we can't. And so to our moms that are far away, we want to say, moms, we love you. Grannies, we love you. Thank you for being the awesome people that you are. And so we thank God because he created moms and he made them the special way that they are. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making our awesome moms. Help us to appreciate them and to remember to, to say thank you and to show our love to them. Thank you that you care about us so much that you created moms for us. And we praise you and thank you for them. And we pray that you would bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing together, Lord, I lift your name on high. Boys and girls, let's stand and you can follow Auntie Brenda and do the actions with her.
two scripture readings today. The first comes from the Old Testament book of Chronicles, and it's a list of soldiers that David summons to himself when he needed to be transitioned into kingship after Saul's death. It was a chaotic time. Uh, they'd been plunged in war, and he needed brave warriors and heroes. And, and our reading is a, a list of these brave warriors and heroes that come. It's a formidable list on the one hand, because of the sheer quantity of, of highly trained and skilled people. But the list gets really interesting when we get to the tribe of Ishaka. And so when you listen to uh, the reading, have a listen to how the tribe of Ishaka is singled out. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Now, Ephesians is a beautiful letter. It's a letter of encouragement and inspiration. It's Paul writing to the church in Ephesus, which was a key mission congregation. It was at the hub of a number of the churches in Asia Minor. And Paul writes to them because they will ultimately train up and be a, a hub for Christian leaders over the next decade or so. But as Paul is in prison in Rome, he's seeing trouble on the horizon. And, and he writes to warn them about the trouble that is coming and encouraging them to stand firm in their faith, to stand firm in uncertain times, to shine the light in difficult and uncertain times. And as such, I think the letter has a lot of value for us who find ourselves in very turbulent waters. So let's listen to God's word. Today's reading is from 1 Chronicles 12, verses 23 to 32. These are the numbers of the men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said. Men of Judah, carrying shield and spear, 6,800 armed for battle. Men of Simeon, warriors ready for battle, 7,100. Men of Levi, 4,600, including Jehoda, leader of the family of Aaron, with 3,700 men, and Zadok, a brave young warrior with 22 officers from his family. Men of Benjamin, Saul's kinsmen, 3,000, most of whom had remained loyal to Saul's house until then. Men of Ephraim, brave warriors, famous in their own clans, 20,800. Men of half the tribe of Manasau, designated by name to come and make David king, 18,000. Men of Ishasha, who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. Our second scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 20. Act like people with good sense, not like fools. These are evil times, so make every minute count. Don't be stupid. Instead, find out what the Lord wants you to do. Don't destroy yourself by getting drunk. But let the Spirit fill your life. When you meet again, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, as you will praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank God the Father for everything. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for its truth and its vitality. And now as we apply it to our lives, I pray for your guidance, for your wisdom. Be with the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. To kick our message off, we're going to look at uh, a short video clip. Um, it's about a, a pianist by the name of Eliana Rodriguez. I stumbled uh, upon this video quite by chance and it really grabbed my attention and, and in many ways just illustrates what today's message is all about. Let's have a look. <laughs> Stemmer. (laughs) 
Sorry. Sorry, één minuutje ga. In de zaal, ik zal vragen wie is de ouder. Laat me eens. Wait a minute. We gaan, we gaan toch uitproberen, omdat hè, het is ook weer voor mij eigen ouder. Isn't she absolutely gorgeous? What a, what a stunning way to handle what could have been such an uncomfortable situation. I mean, there they were. She's a world-renowned pianist and they, they hadn't checked the equipment and she gets to sit down at the piano and within seconds, it's obvious that something's wrong. And she could have pouted. She could have made the situation, uh, you know, said, you know, oh, this is just not up to standard and I'm not used to this kind of thing. But instead, she handled the situation with humor and grace and kindness and creativity. And, and I think by the end of that performance, the audience loved her not only for, for her skill, which is so obvious, but they loved her for the person that she was and the grace that she showed under pressure. And in the times that we're living in right now, this is what's needed. And like Eliana Rodriguez, I think we need to demonstrate grace under pressure. We need to show how we can adapt to the moment. I think we have to show how we consider others. That we can deflect embarrassment or cover over people's failures. That we can add joy and humor to situations. And did you notice as well that her humor wasn't directed at anybody other than herself? She created laughter around herself, not towards anybody else. And that is great leadership. And this is the kind of leadership I believe that we need to be exercising at the moment. And right now, there are many concerns about leadership. Just in this weekend, there are real concerns being expressed about authoritarian leadership and hidden agendas and and, and so many people are calling for good leaders to step up. But maybe before we start pointing fingers anywhere else, let's begin with ourselves. And let's ask ourselves, how can we be the best possible leaders in this time? And as I look at the two passages of scripture that 
we've read today, I think there are five leadership principles that we can work towards and strive towards in these times. And point number one we get from the tribe of Ishaka, who we are told understood the times. And that's our first point. We need to be leaders who understand the times. And understanding the times is more than just knowledge. It's more than just knowing facts or, or having an opinion. Understanding the times means that we've been able to penetrate what's really going on, to dig below the surface. Paul says to the Ephesians, understand that these times are evil. And we need to recognize that in all situations, there is always the potential for things to go wrong. For, and, 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 and to some degree, humankind is always in a state of entropy. That's what our sinful nature does to us, is that no matter how hard we try to create a perfect society, there are always forces at work in us and in our society that bring about chaos and destruction. And so we need to understand the difficult times that we live in. We need to be sure that we get advice from solid people and solid opinions. There are so many armchair opinions at the moment, often offered by people who have no uh, expertise and no training. And strangely enough, those opinions are the ones that are often the loudest, whereas the most expert opinions, the ones that have been peer reviewed and, and checked by others that are in the know, their opinions are found in scholarly journals and not on social media. And so it really is important that as leaders, we are the kind who understand the times, not just have an opinion, but actually have dug in deep and understand what's going on. The second leadership quality that the men of Ishaka demonstrate to us is that not only did they understand the times, but they knew what to do. Now, knowing what to do in a, in a certain set of circumstances is more, not just about knowledge, it's also about wisdom. Wisdom is causing the least harm and bringing about the greatest good. That's probably the base definition of wisdom, causing the least harm and bringing about the greatest good. But as Christians, we also want our wisdom to bring glory to God and to show respect and honor towards him. And very often uh, that, that Old Testament phrase comes to mind, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That if we're to be good and godly leaders, we need to operate with wisdom that fears the Lord. Not only is wisdom found in the fear of the Lord, but wisdom is also found in God's will. And so Paul writing to the church in Rome says, find out God's good, pleasing and perfect will. But I love how Paul just puts it straight to the Ephesians. He says, don't be stupid. Find out what the Lord wants you to do. And as leaders, I think we need to really take that advice to heart. It's easy to be reactive, to shoot from the hip. And we're called not to be stupid, not to follow the crowd, but to know what the Lord wants us to do. The third quality that we see is that the men of Ishaka operated as a community, as a family. They were 200 chiefs and their relatives who moved together as one. We're not even told the number of relatives that came along. And, and my sense is that it actually didn't matter because as long as the 200 chiefs operated together, the rest would follow. And the sense that I have is that the tribe of Ishaka were a team. They operated as a team. From what we can see in the Old Testament, that they, they were expert astronomers, not astrologers, but astronomers. And that they were often consulted to give advice on when to plant crops and that kind of thing. They were astute observers of times and seasons, and they did their best to, to be observant. But they also operated as a team together. And this is what we need to learn as we move forward in these turbulent times is that the future doesn't belong to lone rangers, 
but to those who will work as a team. The fifth, at, at least the fourth quality that we see in leadership is described for us in Ephesians when Paul says, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled and guided by the Spirit. And we could speak at length about this. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? And very often people begin to look at this very mystically and think about you know, going to services where people are prayed for and maybe experience, have dramatic experiences. But really being filled with the Spirit is quite simple. And Paul gives us analogy, an analogy. He says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And the verb that he uses in the Greek is a present continuous tense. And he's really saying, how do you stay drunk? Well, you keep drinking. How do you stay filled with the Spirit? You keep drinking. Now, how, how, do, you, how do you drink? Well, when you are filled with alcohol, the alcohol controls you. And that's another clue for us. Because Paul says, by the same token, when we are full of the Spirit, we are controlled by the Spirit. And so to a great extent, the real question is not how much of the Spirit do I have, but how much of me does the Spirit have? If the Spirit nudges me, prompts me, maybe he moves me to pick up the phone and phone somebody because they might need a, a supportive call. Am I going to respond? Will I, will I listen? That's to be filled with the Spirit, is every time I hear his prompting is to respond and do what he asks. The last quality of good leaders is that they live in gratitude. They live lives of gratitude. And Paul expresses this by saying, you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, giving thanks to Jesus Christ. And the idea is that we live life with a God focus, not an us focus, and it has to be about our hearts. And to some extent, when, when we walk around singing, that's what our hearts are full of, isn't it? And, and Paul is encouraging a kind of a lifestyle where every moment we're aware of God. If while I'm heading off to work, if while I'm preparing a message, or if while I'm ironing my clothes, or whatever it is that I'm doing, if I'm humming or quietly singing a gospel song, it means that my heart is full of gratitude and love for God. And Paul is encouraging a God awareness that permeates our thoughts, our lives, and everything that we do. And so, these are the five qualities that Paul and the men of Ishaka have to teach us. The times ahead of us call us to lead well. Eliana Rodriguez faced a difficult situation and she managed and handled it with grace, humor, and love. She made herself less. She covered over the failure of others. She gave her very best in the situation and it turned out better than anyone would have thought or imagined. And I'm sure that those concert goers will remember her concert way above many other concerts that they had attended. Not because she was more skillful, but because she was more graceful. And it's my prayer that we will be the same. Let's go into these weeks and months that lie ahead, understanding our times, being clear on what we need to do, operating as a team and in community, being filled with the Spirit, and living lives of gratitude. Let's pray. Father, it's my prayer that in the weeks and months that lie ahead, we will lead well, that we will set great examples, that we will understand our times, but also that we will act with wisdom, that we will value teamwork, and that we would respond to your promptings. And over and above it all, Lord Jesus, that you would be the song in our hearts. That would shine in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.
don't have a physical offering bag we can pass around. We do have the opportunity, however, to offer something more important than just our treasures. We have the opportunity to offer our lives as an act of worship. So let's join together as we pray. Father of love, thank you that you are our strength and song. Thank you that you fill our hearts with joy and gladness. We know that everything is from you. And so we offer ourselves as an act of worship to you. May our offered lives 
grow into fruitful trees of life, growing your kingdom here on earth. May we be filled and in turn offer all your fullness and goodness to this world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come to you with grateful thanks. We come to you with hearts full of gladness and, and a sincere sense of awe and wonder for all that you've done for us. We are grateful that you have remembered us in our time of need. We are thankful that you have provided so for us, that you have not only just given to us materially, but you have given us the strength and the food in our hearts needed to be sustained. It's you who strengthens us. It's you who comforts us. It's you who restores us and keeps us daily. We are thankful for everything that you have given us, everything you have poured out for your love, for your mercies, and for your blessings. Father, we would come at this time and we would lift before you all those who are serving, all those who are working the front lines, the police, the hospital staff, our leaders, our governments, our bosses, all those that have difficult decisions to make, all those who have put their lives in danger to serve us. We ask that you would be with them, that you would comfort them, that you would strengthen them, and that you would sustain them. And Lord, we pray too for all our moms. We thank you for who they are. We thank you for all they've meant to us. And we ask, Lord, that you would keep them. And though maybe we may not be able to be with them today, we ask that they would know the deep love that we have for them. Thank you for bringing them into our lives. Thank you for giving us them. And so, Lord, we remember too all those for whom this Mother's Day might be a first Mother's Day without their, their moms. Lord, would you speak and comfort their hearts? Would you give them peace and understanding? And Lord, would you also be with those who perhaps this Mother Day are sad as they have not had the opportunity to be a mother? Would you let your love enfold all? Would you comfort? Would you strengthen and would you speak your love? And so lastly, Lord, we would pray that you would be with each and every single one of us that as we find ourselves in these waters, we would turn to you, we would look to you, that we would draw our strength and our courage and our resolve from you, because it is you who is there freely willing to give. May we be a light, may we speak words of love, may we speak words of hope into this country, into this world and into this situation, so that more and more people would come to know of your goodness, your faithfulness, your love, and your mercy. We pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
And so we've reached the end of our service. There are a couple of announcements at the end, um, some birthdays and some other practical announcements. Please do uh, keep watching for those. Um, and as we go into this week, uh, really do try and lead differently. Um, be, be the Eliana Rodriguez in your situations and, and make a difference and bring grace and love wherever you go. Also, do reach out to, to anyone whose name pops into your mind. If, if a face pops into your mind, reach out. There are many folk who are feeling lonely and going through tough times at this point. To all our moms, especially the ones that we can't be with today, we love you and uh, wish we could be with you. And God bless you. And so go into this week. Love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, now and forevermore. Amen. Strubens Valley birthdays for this week. Today we wish a very happy birthday to Gregory Alsop and Tokolo Murane. On Tuesday we have Sean Duffy and on Thursday Dolores Egerton is having her birthday. We pray that your days may be very blessed and that your year ahead will be full of joy. Happy birthday to Wakan Lisiane from Pitora North who is 10 in 10 years old. Happy birthday. And here are the birthdays for Emmanuel and Grace. Today, Rihanna Robertson celebrates her birthday. And on Tuesday, it's Brent Hartley, Peter Enslin, and Barry Hudson. On Wednesday, Jade Lord turns 16, and Ryan van Vake turns 10. On Thursday, it's Marlene Horn and Beryl Halford. And on Friday, Sarah Cummins, Lelo Tahando Lulisa, who turns one, and Jared van Eerden, who turns 14, celebrate their birthdays. Our anniversary for this week is on Wednesday. Felicia and Dion Ferry celebrate 53 years of marriage. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. May they know your presence on their special day and throughout the year ahead. Amen. Folks, just a few concluding announcements to make. Um, and the first is, you may have noticed that slowly but surely we've been able to add a couple of songs to the songs that we sing each week. And, and that's really due to a, a group of folk who I send recordings to each week and they very bravely sing into their cell phones and send those to me and, and we mix them together and, and we get the, the songs that, that we're singing week by week. So a very, very big thank you to our virtual choir. And if you'd like to be part of the team that does that, just drop me a note. And then uh, during this week, I, I did a midweek check-in on Thursday night. And I spoke about Psalm 121 and, and uh, the idea of the moon harming you by night. And I talked about being moon bothered. And uh, many of you responded very appreciatively saying that it was a message that was timeless and helpful. Um, 
And then a couple of you pointed out that it was also full moon on Thursday night. And here's one of the beautiful photos that somebody took um, of that. Um, but uh, if you're not getting the midweek check-ins, I do encourage you to have a look at those on the lockdown page. Um, they, they are all there for you to click on and look at. And in this, uh, the, the one of this past week, I also talked a lot about the practical ways in which we can make a difference. And I do urge you to have a look at those. Uh, we're also aware that some folk are struggling with data and we'll be working on making just audio recordings available of our services. So please watch this space and we will try and arrange that. Uh, the lockdown page will also start carrying the birthdays uh, and anniversaries as a couple of you have asked for those. So please have a look out for those. Thanks everybody. Have an awesome Mother's Day. God bless.